and the question which is raised is that how do charged particles behave in an external magnetic field and from this what naturally follows is that how does how does current behave in external magnetic field Do you get it? Hello? Yeah. Number one, how do charged particles behave in external magnetic field? And number two, how does current behave in external magnetic field? This, this is like, this follows up naturally. Do you understand why it follows up from this? Because what is current? Current is nothing but a moving set of charged particles moving set of electrons okay do you get that the second part of this chapter revolves around in first one magnetic field is external and charged particles are behaving in certain manner due to that external magnetic field in second case moving charged particles moving charged particles creating a magnetic field do you get the difference between the two parts which which are covered in chapter 4 Yes, sir. Due to that, uh, due to that field, the charged particles are behaving in some manner, like moving charge experiences a force in magnetic field, and all all that. Second part is that moving charge particles create their own magnetic field as well. Getting it? So you get it. So let's uh, today I want to revise this part that whatever is there as part of the book that how particles behave in external magnetic field. So first thing, you only tell me how does a charged particle? What happens to a charged particle in a magnetic field? What happens to a charged particle in a magnetic field? First thing, you guys only tell me, Shorya. Um, it will experience a force. All the time? Well, mm, not necessarily. If it's perpendicular. Yeah. Okay, what else? It, it undergoes circular motion if I'm not wrong, right? So like yeah, if, if you if it enters into a magnetic field. No, let's not get to the circular motion as of now. That's a special case. So basically you only told me it experiences force. But it does not experience force in every condition. It experiences force in two conditions. Uh, like there are two conditions when it does not experience force. What are those two conditions? Uh, when the charge is stationary. Yeah. So number one, only a uh, 
moving charge experiences a magnetic force or you can say force in external magnetic only a moving okay this part is clear so that means v not equal to zero second part the moving charge must have must have a component perpendicular to must have a component perpendicular to what magnetic field if it has no component perpendicular to magnetic field then it will not experience any force now same thing both these points are captured in a formula f c why the formula is for force because we are talking about the force which a charge q experiences in a magnetic field b and in this form q v cross b we know for both the things f is equal to 0 if v equal to 0 and f is also equal to 0 if v is parallel to b because the cross product of two parallel vectors is 0 getting it yes sir so these two observations and both of them can be captured beautifully with the help of a formula. And then there is a magnitude of this force, which is QV cross V. Make sense? Yes, sir. Shorya, Rohan, make sense? Yes, yes So as I said, it experiences force. Now, as promised, I will extend the same thing to two, three cases. Case number one. That you have a magnetic field which is going inside it. and uh, and we have this charge particle So there is a Q moving charge like this. So can you first tell me is this perpendicular or not? Hello? I'm sorry, it is. It is perpendicular to the magnetic field, right? Now try to understand that. Which one? That one. The one that is there. Uh, that's not replaceable. That's why I used it. Oh, you have to bring the whole system? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so it is right. 
Now try to understand. Try to understand very clearly. Next part, which we the third part is, we have figured out when the force will be zero. But the part which we need to figure out is that in which direction will the force be. That is we have not figured out. So there, there is left hand rule, rule right hand rule, and all. Uh, you can either learn that or you can just go by the formula. Can you see V cross B here? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes. The direction of the force should be equal to the direction of this resultant vector when you multiply V cross B. Yes or no? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So. Now, for direction, if you apply proper cross product that here V is in this direction and B is going inside. In which direction will it experience the force? Can you tell me? And this is a positive charge. Sir, so we need to we need to show where the force is going, right? So yeah. it would be upwards, vertically upwards. Correct. It will be vertically. Uh, sir, does it depend on the, ch like, um, what the charge is, like what magnitude it carries? It does, right? It depends on the magnitude, yes. No, right, right. Like, no, no, no. Does the, the direction won't, right? Direction depends on the mm, whether it's a positive or a negative charge. Yeah, like, um, so if it were and negative, if it was a negative charge, the force would have been downward. Yeah. So here, do you get it how I applied? So we is like uh, generally this is what i do this is what i recommend see i had to teach you right hand left hand thumb rule and also when i was covering this chapter for the first time i taught you but in general i don't apply any of those i apply only one rule which is a cross product rule so you take your fingers point them in the direction of v and try to curl them curl the fingers towards b the thumb automatically points in the direction of force. So do you get it or not? Sir, I didn't understand how you're doing it. Like you put your, you curl your fingers in. Um, direction of V. V, right. Yeah, so this, these are my fingers then. In this. You get it, right? Like, yeah, yeah. In direction of V because V is like this. So my fingers are pointing like this. Right. Oh, and um, your palm is the magnetic field? My palm is not the magnetic field. See, I can hold my fingers like, can you see me, by the way? I yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold my fingers like this or like this. Both right. ways they are in that direction, no? Yeah. But ultimately, I want to hold the magnetic lines of force. I want to move my fingers towards the direction of magnetic lines of force, which is inward, right? Yeah. So if I point them like this, I can move them inward, right? Like from your perspective, it might be coming. So, the, so like we're grabbing the magnetic field lines. Yeah, but in the direction of magnetic field lines. Magnetic field lines are pointing inside the plane of the paper, right? But then it would always be like clockwise or counterclockwise, right? No, no, no. So if this is the paper, right? And these are my fingers. Yeah. And the magnetic field is going inside the paper, right? So I will grab it like this now. I will not grab it like this. I will not grab it like this. I will grab it like this. Getting it? Because this magnetic field is going 
inside the plane of paper. Had it been yeah, it's, it's, it's easier when you're considering like the plane in there. Yeah, I think I got it. So I'm trying to grab because they are going inside the plane, right? So I'm trying to grab them like this. Yeah. If they were coming yeah. outside the plane, I would have done like rather this. from the outside kind of outside, because they are going outside. Yeah. Got it? Got it. Got it. So here you might have tempted been tempted to say the way I drew the diagram, you might have been tempted to say that the force will be like this, but actually it is upwards. Okay. Hello. Yes. So this is your direction of force. Okay. Getting it or not? So, so now because this is the direction, now think of it before entering this, before entering this, it had only one component like this. Yes or no? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let, let me up this as well. I will like do a little proper simulation. This is like this now. So right now it is just entering the magnetic field. So the direction of velocity is like this only. Okay. Getting it so far? Now next up, next up like Next up, it is into the magnetic field. Like, and I'm making it little down, like entering from here rather than here. You get it, right? Hello? Now it has entered the magnetic field. OK? This charge Q. Because of which it experienced a force like this, it experienced a force like this means it will have acceleration in this direction. It will have acceleration in this direction means it will start having a some component of velocity in this direction. And because it will have a component of velocity in this direction, now the net velocity will be like this. So now the charge has changed direction and it's moving like this. That part you get it or not? Yes, sir. And because it has changed direction and it's moving like this, the charge is still moving perpendicular to the magnetic field? Yes or no? Because magnetic field is in the plane of paper, right? Since it is still moving perpendicular to the magnetic field, again the force will be, even the force will switch direction. Previous direction of force was like this. Now the force will again be perpendicular to the motion. Do you get it? The direction of the charge changed as a result direction of the um, force changed. Force changed, yeah. Right? 
But that's like basically a change in like the direction of velocity of the charge rate causing change in the force because of the formula. Yeah. And this will basically give it a as a result of this basically it, previously it had vector in this direction now. The resultant vector was in this direction now. Now it will start getting a vector in this direction. As a result, it will further move like this. Yes or no? As a result, the force also will further start getting applied in this direction perpendicular to this. Are you getting what's happening? Hello? I think so. So are you able to analyze the kind of motion it is ultimately executing because of this phenomenon? Circular. Yeah. Ultimately, if this phenomenon keeps on going, as it moves, it will move in a, start moving in a circular direction. Getting it? Now try to understand this. This is very important like from the concept point of view. Circular motion. But the question is when did it execute the circular motion? The thing was that velocity, like circular motion is executed when velocity always remained perpendicular to the magnetic field. This part are you getting that in this case because it was moving in this plane while the magnetic lines of force were always perpendicular to the plane. So no matter when uh, whenever it changed velocity even then it remained perpendicular to the magnetic field. Do you get this part or not? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hmm? Pardon? Yeah. 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 It's like staying in the plane kind of. Like it's not um Yeah. It's staying in the plane, but more importantly, plane or no plane, the velocity even even though it's changing, it is remaining perpendicular to magnetic field. Okay. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. And because V and B are always remaining perpendicular, Q V cross B equal to Q V B mod Q V B sin 90. It is equal to Q V B. Do you get it? And QVB equal to mv square by r in this case because the centripetal force for the circular motion is being given by this magnetic force. And as a result, from this we get to our result r equal to mv upon qv. That is my another formula, second formula of the day. Is this clear or not? Hello? Yes, sir. It's clear. Yes, sir. So far, is this clear? Yes, sir. Hello? So this is circular motion. When does it experience a circular motion? when velocity always remain perpendicular to magnetic field. Okay. Then there is one more result derived from this, which is V equal to R omega or omega equal to V upon R. 
which gives us omega equal to v upon mv by qb which is equal to qb by m now omega equal to qb by m is another very significant result very important result you will get to know why okay hello this is important yeah. you will get to know why i will come back to it in a while but for now it's marked and marked important so is this good so far if this is good i am saving this thing as notes and i am opening a fresh board so that we are able to refer to it if and when required i am saving this i am not losing it okay so i will come to the fresh board now let me make a bigger board this yeah now previously we had done that that velocity always remains perpendicular to the magnetic field now let's do a couple of cases where velocity does not always remains perpendicular to the magnetic field so case 1 this is everything is in the plane of paper in the plane only so no 3d thing only 2d i am talking about and magnetic lines of force i am drawing like this these are my magnetic lines of force and my moving charge is so this is b my moving charge i will draw in red is entering this from here q is entering here with a velocity v so first of all so you guys tell me what will be the uh, what will be the direction of force direction of force for this I'm sure out of the plane. Awesome, out of the plane. Again, did you use the cross product law? Medula, did you use the cross product law? Yes, sir. Like this. So you are right. Now, in this case, what kind? So, if it's out of the plane, can you tell me that uh, what kind of motion will it be? Will it be a linear motion this time, or will it still be a circular motion? Tell me. It should still be a circular motion, right? Except a right. vertical circle. Why, Shorya? Uh, it should be like a vertical circle, right? Because it shouldn't it really should make a difference. Be, it will not be a vertical circle. It will be like a three D circle, like you can say. So yeah, that, that's what I meant. Kind like of coming out of the plane. like this and going inside the plane still right because still does the velocity remain perpendicular to magnetic field or not in this case yes, it does 
it does right because it's just that the plane is different right rohan do you get it yes sir you understood this so if you have so if, hmm? yeah so if you have understood this then one more case and then we will come to the a uh, distinct case of where velocity will not remain perpendicular to the magnetic field in a way in that what kind of motion will be there so this is so i have had magnetic field in z direction kind of going inside the plane coming outside the plane uh, with charge moving in x direction i have had magnetic field in y direction right so if you look at it in the previous case Uh, when like i had magnetic field in z direction and my charge was uh, moving along x direction i had my circle in xy plane yes or no right now uh, in this case now i have it in x z plane not in y plane so it's kind of um uh, you get it or not yeah yeah so it's basically like um exactly horizontal yeah exactly horizontal circle right yeah but now now i will just give a little bit of a twist to the story and story will change by the way just just before i come back just for the sake of it because i had planned to cover that i will cover that question and then i will come back and give a twist to this question like this is a simple thing only because like i did magnetic field in y direction i did magnetic field in z direction now what if i do the magnetic field in x direction like this and charge also moves in x direction what happens in that case quickly tell me should be fairly easy this is your magnetic field and charge moves in x direction what happens tell me hello I'm so yeah, no there should be no force acting on it. Yeah, no force acting on it, right? Yeah. Now I, as promised, I will give this a twist. So in both our cases, when the charge entered the magnetic field region, it entered with a velocity perpendicular to magnetic field, right? and mind it in this case what you saw this motion was in the result of this motion was that a circle in x z plane or you can say no movement along y axis this part you understand or not that circle uh in xz plane or no movement in y axis in this particular case do you understand that rohan i think so sir chorya you understand uh not exactly could you when the charge you entered like this what was the condition that the charge entered it entered moving in the positive x direction Mag right. So it was when it entered, it was perpendicular to the magnetic field, and when that happened, right, you yeah. only told that it will be a circle. A circle in which plane? Yeah. One. In the x. So plane. will this charge be having any movement in the y direction, or it will move only in the x z plane, or will it have a movement in y direction as well? it should have no movement along the so y that's direction. what i am saying no movement along y axis all right yeah makes yeah makes medulla does it make sense yes sir 
sure yes sir now time for the twist good time for the twist now i think you guys know what's coming but why that's coming is more important so now instead of this i will make my charge enter the speed not perfectly perpendicular to it mind it it's in the plane only but it enters like this now can you guess what will happen that it's not moving in positive x direction it's moving in x y direction let's say well it's making an angle of 30 degree with the x axis something like so that so we can find the vertical and horizontal component yes so we with the horizontal component we can find the vertical circle the x z plane one and the x z plane one will be also moving with the the other component the diagonal circle yeah it'll be like a helical as as we have learned is like the part it, that it's called it helical but uh, not two circles see try to understand shorya v cos theta yeah not two circles because there's no force acting along v the yeah, it's v no sin theta along, along v it's sin theta yeah. it's a sort of spiral kind of like it's, it's like a spiral yeah like a coil so so v sin theta will be like a straight line motion like this and v cos theta will be a circle like this the combination of a straight line motion in this direction and circle in this direction will form a helix like Yes. Getting it? Hello. Yes. So what do you get? Number one, circular motion. If charged particle. enters with velocity perpendicular to magnetic field right straight line motion if it enters with a velocity parallel to magnetic field and third bit helical motion if it enters with a velocity non perpendicular non parallel to the magnetic field is this good guys is this good tell me is this good yes sir yes sir Sure. 
okay so this part is clear the motion is clear motion of a charged particle is clear now there are two more concepts like as per your syllabus in this part first of all to like formulas so far i will list again number one was first one was f equal to qv cross b second one was mv upon qb equal to r third one was omega equal to v upon r which gave me qb upon m more on this little later so three formulas so far and like these notes okay now let's come to the next part of this story is that so far we have been focusing only on the single charge in magnetic field now i will focus on group of charges a group of charges moving in a magnetic field so a group of charges moving in a magnetic field this will this is also called current in a magnetic field because a bunch of charges moving in a magnetic field is what it's current only moving charges a bunch of moving charges in a magnetic field constitute current again i am not talking about magnetic field due to the current i am talking still uh, today's term is still dedicated to moving charges in a magnetic field okay so we have moving charges in a magnetic field how i am taking a current carrying wire and i am taking a magnetic field such that the wire is perpendicular to that this magnetic field like this i am taking so can you say that all the charges moving in this wire are perpendicular to the magnetic field can you say that or not rohan there is a current sure. carrying wire. yeah they are like all perpendicular all are perpendicular right yeah and for one charge i had force on single charge was qv cross b right now force on all these charges combined can i say is equal to all the charges into their drift velocity so like total charge into v d cross b can i say this or not because what is drift velocity drift velocity is like a like net of net velocity net average velocity of all the charges right sir so it's like uniform yeah it is like uniform yes but can i say this or not that the force experienced by this current carrying conductor will be this yes or no yes sir sure now total charge is equal to how much i will write an expression and then i will explain what its meaning is n l a q 
and then into VD cross B. Now, why am I writing N L A Q? Th things have a meaning. N is nothing but charge per unit volume. So, charge per unit volume multiplied by length and area of cross section of the wire gives me the total charge and Q is basically nothing but you can say charge on an electron. So let me write it QE in fact. Do you get how this formula is coming? Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Do you get where this is coming from? Yes, sir. That why you wrote it. Uh, so N L A Q E is the total charge, right? Hello. Now this one gets simplified further. Now this is like the proof of another formula. That's what we are doing right now. So I combine this. I take out L here and I combine it N A Q E V D. L cross B. I have just rearranged it. Any problem? I have rearranged, I have just exchanged like the position of VD and L. Now you might say that they are vectors, but the thing is that product does not make any difference. Product will remain same. You write L into VD or VD into L. Vector wise, the direction wise, it will make a difference. But in this case, the length of the wire and the velocity of electrons, if it's a straight current carrying wire, are exactly in the same direction. Are exactly in the same direction. So that's why I call it LVD cross B or VD into L cross B. It does not make a difference. Is this part clear or not? That how I exchange the vectors VD and vector L. Why was I able to exchange them? Rohan, is this clear that why was I able to exchange the vectors VD and L? Why was I able to use them? In Can you hear me? Like I've been having some... No, now, now I state. hear you, yes. I don't know if you yeah. no, no, like just started talking, but like I think there was a bit of a problem like where I disconnected, but yeah, so tell me. Oh sir, could you repeat like no, I am asking that uh, do you understand why I exchanged VD and L? Does that make sense or not? No, sir. I think I missed that part. Okay. Like okay. I, I, I left off when you're at LVD. Okay. Shorya, do you understand that why I exchanged VD and L? I'm not really. I didn't understand that part. Okay, 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 okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. So let's say there are two vectors. Let's call them. A and B. Okay. Hello. Yes, sir. Can you tell me, let's say A is 2i cap plus 3j cap and B is 8i cap plus 12j cap. Are they parallel vectors or not? So they are parallel. They are parallel, right? Because even though like magnitude is different. Yeah, magnitude might be different, but are they parallel or are they not? They should be. 
they are parallel right yeah now let's say i write two vectors mod a into b this is one vector do you get why this is a vector because mod a is a scalar it is a value but right. scalar multiplied by vector is a vector right or i write mod b into vector a are the two things same or not you might so you will find that both are same check check again here so this vector mod a is root of 2 square plus 3 square into 8i cap plus 12j cap and this vector is root of 8 square plus 12 square into 2i cap plus 3j cap see first one what happens from the first one you get 4 plus nine, root 13 into 8i cap plus 12j cap that's the result you get from the first one from the second one you get the result root of 208 into 2i cap plus 3j cap which is equal to root of 13 into 16 2i cap plus 3j cap which is further equal to root 13 into 4 into this 2i cap plus 3j cap which further gives root 13 into 8i cap plus 12j cap isn't it aren't both the results same this and this tell me they're the same sir so what can we say that if two vectors a and b are parallel are parallel then mod a into b is equal to mod b into a can we say that or not yes sir now same situation was here now i'm rubbing all this for now oh so since l and v are parallel we can like exchange the scalar and vector kind of right right exactly 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 so that's why that's why so far like i will again rewrite that exchange part that so i say n a q e l v d cross b now l is a scalar v d is a vector becomes n a q e v d l cross b why because l and v d are parallel in this case mind it they need not be parallel in all the cases they are parallel in this is getting it actually yeah. they will be parallel in all the cases like even if it's a circular wire it, the electrons will always move along the length only right yes or no yes sir so you get this part or not so far yeah i got it everybody Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now this thing, N A Q E V D. Look at it carefully. What it is. N is charge per unit volume. 
into a into q e you can write vd as l by t that length covered per unit time because it's a constant velocity right it's not a variable velocity that we have to write dl by dt it's a constant velocity so we can write l by t yes or no hello yes sir now what is this a into l is volume of the wire n is charge per unit volume number of electrons per unit volume so n into a into l gives you total number of electrons you get how yeah total number of electrons into charge per on per per electron divided by the way i missed this this into l cross b there are two l's don't get confused this l is coming from vd l upon t okay well this l cross b was already there now this thing means total number of electrons into charge on one electron so this whole thing becomes what total charge by some time into l cross b now charge per unit time is called what current current so from here you get your last formula for this bit i l cross b so i l cross b so f equal to i l cross b i am rewriting it here is nothing this is the derivation and i l cross b is basically the force experienced by a straight current carrying conductor in an external magnetic field does this tie things up for you hello yes sir yes sir rohan sorry yes sir yes sir i think this does tie things up for you yes or no yeah makes sense yes sir makes sense perfect sense yes sir yes sir so i'm saving this as note 2 now let's come to the last bit of this i will borrow the diagram from your textbook for that Rather than making it from the scratch myself, so that is the cyclotron. So I think cyclotron got deleted from our portion. Is it from the board syllabus itself? Yes. Sure. I think if Rohan can confirm, I'm pretty sure it's gone. Yeah, it's it's gone. It's gone. Okay, so but we have a neat aspirant here in form of Medulla, and she is not from CBSE board as well. So I will cover it. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. That's fancy. Yes. Sir. And I hope you respect the knowledge part of it, if not the. Yeah. The competitive aspect. Yeah. Yeah, that's fancy.
let me copy this information also. So that text also I don't need to write again. Now here, it's based on one principle called omega equal to QB by M. Remember we found this relationship? Hello? Yes, sir. Now this is a very important result. What is omega? What is omega? So the angle omega velocity. is the angular velocity. Yeah, angular the velocity. Right? So omega is the one which determines that how much time it takes to complete a circle. So time taken for one revolution is 2 pi upon omega. This you get it? 2 pi is total angular displacement by total angular velocity. So in linear motion, just like we have linear displacement by time, in rotatory motion you have angular displacement by time, by sorry, just like in linear motion we have linear displacement by linear velocity, this time in rotatory motion we have angular displacement by angular velocity, right? as long as the velocity is constant. Now the angular velocity is dependent on what things? Charge on the particle, magnetic field and mass. Now for a given particle, charge on the particle and mass of the particle will anyways remain constant. If you can somehow ensure that the magnetic field is also constant uh, while the given charge is moving, you get all three constant values, right? So now you, no matter what you do with the charge, you accelerate it, decelerate it or do whatever, your omega will remain constant. And because your omega will remain constant, time for one revolution will also remain constant. Is that good enough for now? You get that part? That if somehow in, a, in any setup we can maintain magnetic field constant, then Q and M will anyways be constant. As a result, the angular velocity or time taken to complete one circle for a moving charge will remain constant. Rohan, is that, does that make sense? Yeah. Why? So, weak? yeah. It's like, time of the like rev one revolution yeah time of one revolution if we can maintain constant magnetic field then time of one revolution will remain constant yeah medulla it makes sense yes sir shorya makes sense yep makes sense so now this is what the underlying principle of cyclotron is where the goal is to accelerate the particle, accelerate the charge particle. The working principle is this, what we discussed, how I will tell you. Accelerate a charged particle. Goal is to accelerate a charged particle and this is the working principle. Now try to understand. So a charged particle basically is here and let's say you make the charged particle enter the magnetic field perpendicular to it as we had seen magnetic field is coming out of the page and the charged particle is in xy plane so the velocity of the charged particle will be perpendicular to the magnetic field that part you get it 
in this setup magnetic field is coming out of the page and charged particle is in xy plane so velocity of charged particle will it always be perpendicular to the magnetic field yes or no hello it should right yeah it should be right so a charged particle entered from here and let's say reached this point it was destined to complete a circle like this you get it because the motion will be circular motion that we just studied so a charged particle let's say was moving like this and it was destined to complete a circle like this any problems Do you get what I what I am saying? Rohan, Madhula, please confirm. Yes, I think so. Yes, sir. So it was it would have completed a circle like this, right? Charged particle entered, and it would have completed a circle like this. But as soon as the charged particle entered this region, there is this electric field which was. let's say it was a positively charged particle let's say it was a proton at that time the electric field in this direction kicked in or as soon as the particle reached there you basically started uh, you had a electric field in this direction now electric field what will happen to the charged particle in an electric field it will experience a force electric force not a magnetic force yes or no Yes, sir. As a result, its velocity in this direction will increase. Yes or no? So your R equal to m v by q b. So your v will increase. M q and b are constant. Magnetic field is constant. That is not changing. But because of the electric field which it experienced when it entered this region, what happens? its velocity increased as a result this fellow which was like supposed to go in a smaller circle radius of a small circle is now taking up bigger path it is like now it's supposed to complete a bigger circle somewhat like this as against a smaller circle which it would have covered if its velocity was not accelerated do you get it because its velocity became more it is now supposed to execute a bigger circle getting it medula yes sir basically what did this electric field do it increased the velocity of the particle and as a result now it is headed to go in a bigger circle now the particle comes in this region now so far your electric field was in this direction so it was getting a force in this direction now in this case if the electric field continues to be in this direction what will happen will it slow down or will it still accelerate if the electric field continues to be in this direction what will happen to it medula will it slow down or will it accelerate so it will slow yeah. down but if you want it to accelerate what will you need to do as soon as it comes here you need to reverse the electric field electric field if you manage to reverse the electric field just in time what will happen to it it will again get a push and it will now aspire to go in a even bigger circle yes sir now when it reaches here let's say here again you can't have this electric field if you want to accelerate it what do you need to do now again switch the electric field Yes or no? 
sir. This time again, if you switch the electric field again, it will be accelerated. As a result, what are you able to do? You are able to increase its velocity by switching the electric field. What are you able to do? You are able to increase its velocity consistently, right? Yes, sir. And luckily, angular velocity does not depend on the velocity. So, despite the fact that its velocity is remaining same, the time taken to cover half a circle remains same, even though it's moving in a bigger circle and with a bigger velocity. Time taken to complete half a circle still remains same. Because Q, B, and M have not changed. Yes or no, Medula? Yes, sir. So, because the time taken to cover the half a rotation remains changed, irrespective of how big a circle it is moving, because that remains same, what you can do is program this oscillator because you know. You know from this calculations that time taken to complete half a circle you can calculate because of this. This is t equal to 2 pi by omega is time taken to complete the full circle. t equal to pi by omega is the time taken to complete half a circle. You know the time it takes to complete half a circle. What you can do is that you can program this oscillator. to switch electric field at time interval t which is pi by omega if you program this oscillator to switch at regularly at time interval t, what will happen? You will make sure that the particle keeps on getting accelerated every time the electric field is switched, it keeps on getting accelerated. Okay, yeah. it will keep on going spiral, 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 spiral. Ultimately, what will happen? That ultimately, let's say you have reached the target speed, you want it to exit. Now, this is supposed to go like this. Why will it go like this? It is supposed to go like this, but then this is called deflection plate. Deflection plate basically has something in the opposite polarity to the charge. So, if it's a positive charge, this deflection plate will be negative. So that if the charge is tending to go in this direction, this deflection plate will cancel out that force which is taking it in this direction. And as a result, this will not go in this direction once it comes near the deflection plate, it will go in this direction. And that's how you are making a charged particle exit at a very high speed. You get it or not now? So just a question. Why use a deflector plate while you can just switch off the magnetic field when it reaches a critical velocity? It's uh, more foolproof, right? To have a deflector because switching off will again require you to have some kind of timing, you know. And probably Shorya, you you might be right also that there might be an automatic system to yeah. Switch on the deflection plate. Kind well, of. if an oscillator is spinning so fast, I'm sure they can figure out to just turn the electromagnet off because probably they're using electromagnets. Because yeah, automatically, no, no, no. Even the deflection plate charge, you can turn on and off, right? Based on yeah. the target. So you, I'm sure this must be automatic. The role of deflection plate is to make exit. Now, how you control the deflection plate through a computer program? or through a manual thing is a different question altogether. But I'm sure if there is such a sophisticated device, then even the deflection plate will be programmatically controlled. Programmatically controlled. Right? No, I was just wondering what's more feasible, attracting a charged particle using 
an oppositely charged thing or just turning off the thing that's creating the force in itself that, See, there, uh, that there, might, there might be merits and demerits but like turning off will not change right anything magnetic field is still there it's not all going in a circle because of the electric field if you yeah, switch off the electric I said field, switch off the magnetic field yeah you can switch off the magnetic field yes yeah that's what i was saying yeah if so you switch that, off the magnetic field then it just goes straight yeah that can be done like i don't disagree with you there and even that can be programmed right for precision yeah. just like the deflector plate can be programmed so like i don't disagree with you okay yes sir and uh, uh, just one last question what do you think would they do to make sure that uh, the ex any external electric field does not uh, interfere with the process what can what do you think can they do to make sure that enclose it in a radiation proof container enclose it not in a radiation proof container enclose, uh, enclose it in a conducting enclose it in a conductor enclose it in a conductor right why would that help sir hmm? why would that help why would that help what electric field can pass through conductors right? electric field inside the conductor is we learned in the last chapter second chapter i think or oh, first zero? Chapter, electric field within the conductor is zero right okay, that works hmm that works yes yeah okay so what about external magnetic field if there like multiple os multiple of these next to each other external magnetic field you are saying right yeah yeah so that i don't know like that is a good question but how will they control the external magnetic field i don't know i mean in a facility so, where they have one of so, these they so, probably have so many probably probably through a dielectric because dielectric is something which works to control both the electric field as well as magnetic field so probably via that yeah, but we don't have a clear shot answer to this as of now yeah okay okay bye guys i think so now uh, i hope thursday you will you will be able be ready with the uh, solutions of that chapter like we will take a temporary jump back to the third chapter on thursday okay okay sir okay sir. thank you sir bye yeah master